Hello there, it's Sunday the 19th of June 2016. Well, I've just got back from church and oh, I'm so disappointed. They have reintroduced that dreary old Gloria that I, I really dislike that. Gloria... Oh, it's, oh, it's hideous. It's so depressing. It really is. Why do they keep insisting on bringing that back? And they bring it back for a few weeks and then they flip back to the other one, which is quite nice. But today... Uh, oh, please. I'm going to have to write to Father Danny. I will send Father Danny a, a, a very good version, which I found, which goes... Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. We need tambourines, boys and girls. That's what we all need to go to Barbados or somewhere like that for church, where they have beautiful women in, in very colourful clothes, standing out the door with tambourines, welcoming everyone in. Not like every Sunday is a funeral. Uh, so a little bit disappointed with that this morning. Um, I eventually took Adam's advice on the old cat litter. See how we move from church to cats. Unbelievable, isn't it? We, <laughs> I took Adam the plumber advice, who's coming to me to the with uh, with me to the uh, O2 on Thursday. It's Barry Manilow week for me, Chris Reardon. Oh yes, tomorrow, I am uh, going down with my mate Ronnie to Cardiff to the Valley to see the Barry Manilow concert in Cardiff. So I have a night off. So those of you that usually attend my Monday karaoke night, fear not, because my very good friend and companion, Mr Ben Parker, will be covering the event with more lights than you could ever imagine, probably. I think, I don't know if he brings his light shows. He's got so many lights there. Oh, that's setting up so much hassle and plugging wires and things in like that. But Ben will be with you tomorrow night at the uh, um, Central Station in Wharfdale Road, King's Cross. And uh, tonight, of course, it's Sunday night tonight. I do hope some of you will be able to join us all at the Golden Line in Sydenham. Remember, there's two Golden Lines I work at. The Sunday one is Sydenham. The Golden Line in Sydenham from 8pm until 12 midnight tonight. Be there and sing us a tune or just come and watch. A lot of people just come and watch. You know, they don't want to sing. They just want to come and watch uh, other people sing. So that's quite nice. Um, yes, uh, uh, I took, took uh, Adam the Plumber's advice with my cat litter. And I'm now using pink cat sands. C-A-T-S-A-N-S, which is actually much better. It it's, um, uh, uh, doesn't seem to be going across the kitchen floor all over the place. But I wanted to show you this. You, you haven't seen this gadget before. You haven't seen this. I have had this for a few years. A uh, few Christmases ago, my sister uh, wanted to know what I wanted for Christmas. And I said, can you get me one of those... Um, uh, handheld vacuum cleaners, but not a crap one because there's so many rubbish um, uh, portable vacuum cleaners about. You, you know the ones where you just lift it with your hand, like car cleaners. They are absolutely useless. Do be very careful and never buy one that you can use that plugs into the car cigarette holder because they're all useless. They just haven't got the power behind them. But we found this. Oh, yes. This is the job. Look, 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 look. Dyson. Dyson. A fellow Get Britain out of the UK type person. Mr. Dyson. Yes. Look, Dyson. Look, at this is the job. Listen to this. Isn't that fabulous? And it gets all the little bits and pieces up. All the dust everywhere. Look at that. Lovely. I'll just give you a little bit of a hoover. Oh, you look so much cleaner now. So this is the thing. And all the little bits and that collect in the bottom there. Can you see? Little bits of dust and stones. So for those little stones um, that do end up halfway across the kitchen floor, I have my portable Dyson vacuum cleaner. Battery operated. The only thing is the battery, I think it's about, I don't know how long. It's about probably about seven minutes. And that's always annoying when you're out in the car and you do that. And, oh, no, the battery's died. It takes, I don't know how long it takes to charge up, actually. I usually leave it. As soon as it dies, I put it back on the thing again. But um, it, it's like lots of things with batteries and what have you. You are supposed to use them until they completely die. And then charge it up. 
Uh, all this all this topping up batteries and things uh, doesn't do your stuff very good, really. It's the same with a mobile phone, you know, which uh, those of you that uh, I, I, most of you know this already. But all these shows are filmed on an iPhone uh, 5S. I've got I've got a 5S. All the shows are filmed on the iPhone 5S. Indeed, when you watch um, the live karaoke streams or I might do a, a Facebook Live thing, they are all done on a mobile phone, which is positioned wherever is, is a good position in which ve whichever venue I do. So that's uh, just for your information. And even the iPhone, I use it uh, at least a couple of times a week until it completely dies. Like I might leave it on you know, unlocked in the house, so it completely dies, and then I charge it up again, and that's the way you get the best use out of that battery. And uh, talking of live shows, uh, we did, uh, when I got in last night from work, I got in, oh, it was late last night, because um, they bloody well closed roads again on a Saturday night in the middle of London. They close, they don't do it during the week, they do it on a Saturday night in the middle of London, uh, not uh, coming on the Westway, they'd close the Westway and the queues of traffic. And of course, I got caught up on all this and the hour journey turned into an hour and 40 minutes coming home in the middle of the night. You know, it really has something to be seen, you know, one o'clock in the morning and you've got queues and queues of traffic trying to leave London. It's just a blooming nightmare. Anyway, so I got home last night and on the way home, uh, I was listening to uh, one of the Tony Blackburn. I'm a big fan of Tony Blackburn's, always have been. Here's my hero DJ. Uh, as in music DJ. My hero music DJ is Tony Blackburn. And uh, I was listening to him on the way home in the car, and I thought, that's quite nice. And I, you know, and I thought, um, people that, that they want to hear just perhaps want to hear his voice. And I thought, you know, maybe there's one or two people that might want to hear my voice now and again a little bit more regularly than they do already. You never know. It's quite nice to have a friendly little voice in your ear, oh, isn't it? So I got back last night, uh, come upstairs, brushed my teeth, and then we did a little live um, a bed bedroom cam last night. A bedroom cam. And, of course, you know, we've got the usual suspects on there who thought they were going to see a little bit of flesh or it was some sort of pornographic show. And you should know by now I don't do that type of show. I really don't. You know, OK, so I was completely naked in bed. Which you might have enjoyed, that, that little thought in your mouth. In, sorry, in your, in your head. You might have enjoyed that little thought in your head. The thought of my naked body in bed speaking to you. But all you could see was my shoulders, my bare shoulders, boys and girls. Which, incidentally, you must always cover your shoulders if you're going into the Vatican in Rome. Very important. I just want to, you know, it just came into my head then. I've seen people not let in the Vatican, in St. Peter's Church, because they have got their show. I mean, what do you think it is, Daddy? A beach? Do you think you go in some sort of pair of doors and you're going into a beach or a sauna? No, cover your blooming shoulders up and be a bit more respectful. How rude you are. So there's no ever, ever, ever any rudeness on my programmes. OK, uh, but some of you sent a message. Um, uh, let me see. I think it was Kiki D. Let me get to Kiki. Oh, there we are. Kiki D, I nearly choked on my coffee this morning when I saw the words bedroom cam. Oh, I bet you. What did you think you were going to see, Kiki D? Honestly, dear. See, you could have been with us live. Generally, I think... Um, I think people who have hit a subscribe button somewhere on Facebook Live do get like a, a bleep or a little flash on their phone whenever we're doing a live thing. Uh, and you can join in. And then you see I get the messages straight away and then we can kind of have a, uh, a two-way chat with various people. Uh, which is quite nice. But I, I think you do have to hit a subscribe button or somewhere on one of the uh, videos, uh, one of the live videos. So that would be the, the square ones. This one, all, all the recorded ones are wide, aren't they? All the live ones are a little bit shorter. So somewhere on there, I think, is a, is a, is a subscribe button and then you would get a little message whenever we're live. But if you can't see it live, it doesn't matter because it always goes up as a recording afterwards. And uh, yes, Kiki D says, uh, when I saw Bedroom Can, such a lovely and intimate, intimate, an intimate broadcast. Thank you. I'm glad that you enjoyed the intimacy. I really am, Kiki D. We do get a little bit intimate, just you and I together, on this programme. We do, dear. We do. Uh, by the way, uh, back to the karaoke. As I, Kiki D reminds me of karaoke. It's only the Monday I'm away this week, OK? So Monday, Ben will be doing Central Station, and I shall be back at the Golden Lion, as always. Uh, the Golden Lion in Sydenham tonight. 
That's Sunday from 8 o'clock. And the Golden Lion in Camden on Tuesday. That's at 9 o'clock, all right? Um, let me see. Let me see. Where are we now? Oh, I'm, I'm losing my place. I've lost my place now. Where is it? Pet. I've showed you the pet. Have we done that? Have we done that? Just a minute. Let's throw that away there. I'm, I'm surrounded by bits of paper at the moment. There we are. Now, what was that? Done that. Done that. Oh, yes. They've got a... Uh, I can't remember if I told you this. Um, so hopefully I haven't. They've got a new self-service till at the post office in Wokenham. Oh, no. No tissue. Oh, it's inside. Sneeze time. Sneeze. Oh, man. <laughs> oh. oh, by the way, the birthdays are coming up. Don't worry. If it's your birthday, that will be coming up, boys and girls. <laughs> we don't miss out any birthdays, or at least we try not to. Okay. Oh, actually, let me just check out. Um, someone sent me an email, and it might be their birthday today. They, they gave plenty of notice. Let me just double check that it's not their birthday today. Oh, you know what tomorrow is, don't you? The longest day of the year, boys and girls. Let me just see if I can find this now. Yeah, please hold. You're in a queue. Let me just... Uh, oh, oh, it's, oh, nearly missed that. No, it's tomorrow. It's tomorrow. Okay, we'll do that tomorrow. Don't worry. Someone has sent in an email and they were informing me of their birthday tomorrow. Um... Yes, in, I can't remember if I told you this yesterday, but uh, they have now installed a self-service till in the post office in Wokenham. Yeah, for you to, to send off your own parcels and things without actually going to a member of staff, you know, behind the counter. So there's two of these, one next to each other. And there's a pair of scales in the middle. And you... <laughs> Honestly, you, you, you've got your parcel and you look and, and this lady, would you like to come and use our self-service? So there's someone standing there as well, which I think kind of de probably defeats the object of actually having it there. So you've got the self-service check-in and a lady to tell you what to do. Well, you might as well just give it to someone. Behind. <laughs> just madness. Um, and honestly, it's so complicated because there's so many different options. I don't know if you've ever taken a parcel to the post office and they're like, how would you like to send it? <laughs> well, I'd like to someone to take it away and deliver it, please. Yeah, but what method would you like? Do you want to send a packet or a parcel or first class or second class? Do you want it signed for? Do you want it insured? It's so bloody complicated. Well, this self-service delivery, this self-service um, parcel machine is no different. You've got all these options and you don't know what's what. And then underneath a shelf is various different rolls of tickets. Not coming out of a machine. Rolls of tickets, which is supposed to stick on there. And then there's a box. I said, well, what is it small? Is it small, medium, or large? I said, well, I don't know. There, there it is there. She said, oh, that's a small one. I said, well, how big can it be? And she said, oh, there's a box up there. And there was a big box up there. I said, is that a small one? She said, yes. I saw you can get quite a lot in that. You know, it, it was a fair-sized box really, that you could put this so-called small parcel in. And honestly, the post office have made things so complicated, I couldn't use that on my own. Absolutely no way. And then you, what, which, which ticket do you stick on? All these little rolls of tickets are under the shelf. What a stupid idea. And you know this thing will have cost them thousands and thousands of pounds. They probably spent a small fortune trying to get this damn thing working. All right, well, we need this option. We need that. We don't. And I said to the woman, I said, how is this ever going to work? She said, oh, you'll be surprised. You'd get used to it. I don't think so. I've only just got used to the self-service um, scanners in Waitrose, dear. God's sake. Honestly, it's anything. These, these, these bloody big companies will spend an absolute fortune trying to get rid of a member of the staff and replacing them with robots, basically. You know, do it yourself. I don't think, I don't think that's ever going to work. Do, has anyone else seen one of these, these self-service post office things? I mean, it's a different case. If you want a couple of stamps, they put a coin in a machine and stamps go. They haven't got that. You would think they'd have a machine in there where you'd put a coin in and some stamps would come out. No, they haven't got one of those. That was just so easy. No, but they've got a machine to take your parcels in that you need someone to assist you in what buttons to press. 
And remember, you know, how many times are you going to go in there with the same size and weight of parcel? Not going to happen, is it? So every time it's going to be a different method to what you use. Christ, oh my, what a stupid idea. So that's the post office in Wokenham. Lovely. Uh, I was watching the news yesterday and um, Tim Peake, he's that British astronaut and he's been up there six months in that time. I don't think I could do that. Oh, no, dear. I mean, it's bad enough being in an underground train for sort of 15 minutes, isn't it? Can you just imagine being in a space station? And these are not big. You know, it's not like the Starship Enterprise where we love Star Trek and Captain Jean-Luc Picard or Kirk or, of course, the wonderful Captain Catherine Janeway. Uh, all those people uh, in charge of the Starship Enterprise or Voyager where they can walk around for miles and they don't get to they don't get around the ship. No, this is a very small, confined space. This space station. And how you could sit up there with the same three people for ages and age. Oh, that would just do my head in. It really would. I don't think I could do that at all. But Tim Peake, yes, he came down from the spaceship yesterday in, that, in, in an even smaller capsule. Which apparently gets hotter and hotter and hotter inside. And apparently because you've been up there in space in, in, in weightlessness you know, no gravity. As they're coming down, it, it, there's quite a lot of pressure on their chests, but they are sort of aware that this is going to happen. I don't think I'd like that, dear. No. Wouldn't like that at all. And then, where, where do you think this, this capsule, does it splash down in the nice water? No! On hard land! On hard land, it comes banging down in the middle of some desert in Russia somewhere. Kaz is it Kazakhstan? Is that Russia? I don't know. I've never been there. I'd like to see all the buildings in Moscow. I think that would be quite nice. But then I'd have to fly there, wouldn't I? I can't be doing the travelling. I'm fed up with flying. So that was nice. We saw, as and, and the camera was there, right? And, the, uh, and it saw the, the, I don't know who was doing the filming. Bloody awful cameraman, you know. Who's running Russian television? And then they said, you won't actually see it touch down because there's no cameras there. What? they known this thing was coming down for six months. Years. Why haven't they got a camera there so that we could watch it bang down on the ground live? Madness. They could have sold that to the news channels, couldn't they? But no, I suppose that's one of the one of the um, uh, secrets things, isn't it? You know, where one country doesn't want, want the other one to know how they do this and that. Oh, get over it, dear. Get over it, honestly. So that was Tim Peake. Congratulations to him for coming down. It was great seeing the parachute come through the come through the clouds because I think it has to slow down from like hundreds of miles an hour to about fifteen, and then it goes bang on the ground. Apparently, it feels like a like a car crash as it comes down. Why they can't put a couple of uh, uh, you know uh, uh, duvets or um, or or spring mattresses out there? I don't know. I would happily have lent them my spring mattress to come down so the spaceship would come down and bounce a couple of times, so it would be less. You know, or foam. Foam or cardboard boxes, anything to break the fall. But no, it comes smashing down onto the desert, dear. Let me pick my pens up. Most uncomfortable. Congratulations. They're very accurate with the time as well, aren't they? They said it will be landing at 10.15. How do they know that? How do they know, almost to the second, what time it was coming down? It's like, you know, it's like the old, uh, the, you know, when the Queen does events. You know, our Queen. Everything is timed to the second. How do they do that? At 10.15 and 20 seconds, the Queen will be appearing on the balcony. And at 10.15 and 40 seconds, she will lift her hand and wave to the crowd. <laughs> We love the Queen. Here on United Kingdom Talk, we love the Queen. And she's always smiling, just like Tim Peake was, the astronaut. He was always smiling, wasn't he? Did you notice that? Whenever he came on the telly, he was always smiling. I can do that. That's quite a scary look, isn't it? I do that sometimes at my karaoke nights and scare people like this. And I keep that up for quite some time. And they try and talk to me and I won't talk to them. <laughs> Let's do these birthdays today, boys and girls. It's birthday time. Oh, yeah. And we still... We still haven't played Danny the Plumber's video yet, have we? I, I will try and remember to do that. Possibly tomorrow. 
<laughs> oh, it shows you. It's about 50, it's about a minute long, 50 seconds long, a minute long. And it's a speeded up um, Adam uh, installing Ray Reynolds's new bathroom uh, basin. So I will try and remember to do that. Happy birthday today to uh, John Cooperman or John Cooper. You've got so many Facebook profiles. It's unbelievable, John. Anyway, this video has appeared on all of them as if by magic. Happy birthday today, John. He uh, used to come and sing at my karaoke nights. I haven't seen him for a while, but I hope you're well, John. Uh, happy birthday today to uh, Cabaret Extraordinaire Dusty Springs, who I've worked with a couple of times. Hope you were. I haven't seen you for a while. Hello, Dusty. Happy birthday, my darling. Happy birthday to pretty boy Kyle Jones. I haven't seen you for ages. Lovely picture of you laying on a beach in a pair of Speedos. I might, I might put mine on later. Happy birthday today to Hayden Stephen Jones. Peter St. James, Nicola Evans, little Nicky, Nicola Evans. Happy birthday, Nicola. Happy birthday to Mark Alston, uh, Liam Porter. It's Liam's birthday today. Only a picture of your chest <laughs> as your profile. Where's the rest of you? What happened? Happy birthday to Craig Lawless, uh, Louis Ramirez, Alum, Paul Cuthill, who I went on holiday with years ago. Uh, happy birthday, Paul. Now, you must be getting on a bit now. It doesn't say your age there, which means you're probably over 50. <laughs> happy birthday, Paul. Happy birthday to Roxy Terrett, who used to live just a few doors down when I was little boy. When I was little boy. Uh, so happy birthday, uh, Roxy. You, you look as good as you did then, my darling. You really do. And uh, that's it. They're all the birthdays today, boys and girls. <laughs> Birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, beautiful people, happy birthday to you. All right, hope you have a lovely day uh, on your birthdays, all of your boys and girls. Uh, maybe a few cakes, or maybe if you're on your own, uh, you can have a nice, quiet birthday on your own as well, can't you? All right. That's it today, boys and girls. Don't forget, once again, it's Sunday night. So tonight I'll be hosting karaoke at the Golden Lawn in Sydenham. That starts at eight o'clock at night and finishes at 12 midnight. All right. Apart from that, have a nice Sunday. See you soon. Bye bye.